In this presentation, we will record deposits into QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars file. Let's first take a look at our trusty flowchart over here in the QuickBooks desktop version, just to consider the flowchart. We have, prior to this, been entering invoices, receiving the payments on them, at which point we put information or we put deposits into undeposited funds, which have not reached the bank yet, and also created sales receipts, where we have done the work and received payment at the same point in time. However, haven't yet put them into the checking account. We're holding on to them. Now we're going to go into the checking account, deposit them into the checking account. The deposits into the checking account then in practice could include the received payment items that were received from uh, invoices that we sent in the past. They could include sales receipts as well that could be in different format forms of payment that we would receive possibly in the store which we would then group together hopefully nightly and then go to the bank and deposit them into the bank our objective on the deposit side is to put them into the bank in the same fashion as they will be seen uh, in terms of our quickbooks file in other words we want to make sure that the grouping in the quickbooks file ties out to the grouping of deposits that will be seen on the bank statement, that making it much easier for us to compare and contrast what we have in our books to the bank statement as we will do in the bank reconciliation process. All right, so that being said, let's uh, minimize this screen. We're back in the QuickBooks screen. Let's open up uh, our reports that we're going to be dealing with, and we're just going to open up the two reports this time. I'm going to go to the reports down below. We're going to be opening up our balance sheet report. That's going to be our favorite uh, report down below. We'll open up the balance sheet. We will then change the dates up top. The dates being from 01, 01 to 12-31-20, January through December 2020. Run that report. And there's our balance sheet. We're then going to copy the tab or duplicate the tab. Going up to the tab up top, right-clicking on it and duplicating it. And then we could open the trial balance, but the balance sheet is really all we need here. Let's keep it with the balance sheet. Then I'm going to go back to the left. We're going to be entering a deposit now. So the deposit on, I'm going to go back to the tab on the left. I'm going to select the new item. And then the deposit is going to be typically over here in the other section where we have the record deposit. Now note that they trimmed this down to just three sections. So you would think you would hope the deposit would be kind of like in the customer section, part of the customer cycle, kind of in the make money section over here. But again, it could be a deposit from something other than uh, a customer such as the such as the owner putting money into the company or getting a loan and therefore the, they currently have the deposit information over here on the other side so if we go into the deposit in the other screen on the right we then have our deposit information now typically if you look at the default for the deposit information you're going to have the checking account up top and that's going to be usually what you're going to use if you have multiple checking accounts then you want to make sure that you're picking the right checking account uh, but typically if you only have one then it'll be picking that checking account. Then we need the date of the deposit. We're going to say it's going to be on the January 16th. So we will then keep that date. Then we have the sections down below. Notice there's basically two sections. One's the select payment included in this deposit. And the second section being add funds to this deposit. So if you go down to the second section. Uh, then this is typically where you would be putting deposits. As, as we did kind of when we had the deposit from the owner and the loan where you're just basically going to assign an account and you would do that down below and decide assign the account if it was from the capital account from the owner put it to the capital account or investment from the owner and so on and so forth if it was a bank loan you could put the account here however if we went through the normal process the cycle as we could see in our flow chart over here in the quickbooks desktop version and we entered receive payments and create uh, receipts create sales receipts or sales receipts those then will show up in the top format here so you can see these items are the payments and the sales receipts that we have so now we're going to take these items and we're going to say that we're going to deposit them just simply by clinking them off you, you can see how they tie together the whole flow chart you can see how it basically ties together in terms of the cycle in the flow chart now the deposits tying them out back to the deposits we can then see these items in the deposit now obviously typically you would want to take every deposit you have currently on you when you go to the bank and deposit it, it, you know, typically, hopefully nightly. But we're going to do this in a couple different sets to practice because we want to do this in, in different chunks so we can record the deposits separately than the sales receipts from the invoices and so on for our practice problem. So we're going to just deposit two of these for now. We're going to start off with these two down below, which is going to be the Smith guitars and the string music. If I check those two off, 
then we're going to have these two deposits that will add up to the total down below of the 8,438. That's what's actually going to be deposited when we then go into the checking account then. It's going to be deposited in the amount of 8,438. However, when we look at the other side, the other side that will be affected, undeposited funds, it'll show the breakout of the two items being affected so that we can see it go and increase and decrease in undeposited funds. Let's go ahead and record that and take a look at it. So we're going to go to save and close. Then we're going to go to our uh, balance sheet. Now let's go to the balance sheet and see if we could check this out. I'm going to refresh the balance sheet up top to see if it uh, picks everything up, the new deposits that we have. Then I'm going to close the hamburger because it's getting me hungry over here. I'm going to increase the screen and bring that to the 125. And then we know that the cash went up. So the checking account went up. Let's go into the checking account and see what happened to the checking account. We see that we have the uh, deposit we made on the 16th down below. Going to the right, there's the deposit. And it's on there on that one total of the 8,438. If I was to then go into it, it would then go back to our form, the form that we had entered, which is, of course, the deposit form, which consists of those two components that we have filled out. I'm going to close this back out. The other side is going to be going to the undeposited funds. So I'm going to scroll back up. I'm going to go back to our report summary. I'm going to go into the undeposited funds account. Here it is down below, undeposited fund. Remember, this is a cash account pretty much but it's in the other current asset accounts down here because it acts you know not like a typical cash account like a we're not going to reconcile it in the same fashion so if we go down below there's the deposit there it is there and we have our deposit of the uh, 438 and we also have the item up top the deposit up top here of the 800. now those two deposits were deposited at the same time point in time it's going to be the same th this deposits the same deposit form for both of those it's going to break them out as the two the two separate items why because that helps us to kind of tie things out there's the 8000 here that went up in undeposited funds then we can tie it out there it is going out and we could we could see which deposit then ties out and and that's going to be an important so here's the other side going in here it is going out if i choose any one of those two deposits however I'm going to go back to the same deposit where we grouped them together to make up the full deposit, was, which was that 8438 So that helps us then to group them properly in the checking account. I'm going to close this back out so that it'll tie out to what the bank statement sees. And it'll also help us to tie out properly on the undeposited funds so we could see things going increasing and decreasing and match those two items out. Now, you might be asking, well, is there any effect to the profit and loss? We just deposited a bunch of money. We, it went into the bank account. And really, no, it's not. Because when did it hit the profit and loss? When we made either the invoice, either the invoice, not when we got the received payment, not when we recorded the, the deposit, but when we did the work, the invoice, or when we recorded the sales receipt. So at this point in time, what we're doing now is, is just affecting these two accounts. The income account has already been affected. We're just taking it out of one basically cash account putting it into the other, the, the other being the checking account. Okay, so we're going to go back and do this again. Let's do it again because that was that was good times and we want to continue with those good times. I'm holding down control. I'm going to scroll back down so we're in the 100%. So we're going to go back to our plus button. We're going to be in the other section. We're going to record a deposit. So we're going to record the deposit once again. And we're going to be recording it into the checking account. I'm going to change the date. I'm just going to hit the plus button one time to make it the 17th this time. Now we're going to record. We are going to record the other three deposits we have left over. So we're going to take this one, this one, and this one. Three items which are going to add up to that 13192 We're going to record all of them at the same time. When we do this, the checking account is going to go up by the 13192 And the undeposited funds will go down to zero. Let's go ahead and save and close and see if that is indeed the case or if I'm lying about that. We're going to then go back to the balance sheet. I'm not lying. I don't think that's going to happen. It's going to happen. And if we scroll back up, we may need to refresh the screen. But I think if we go on the checking account, it'll refresh for us. So I'm just going to go straight into the checking account. And then I'm going to hold down control. I'm going to go up a little bit to bring us back to that 125. And then we have another uh, deposits that are happening here. And that's going to be for that 13192 entered in that one lump sum. If we select that item, then we'll go into the deposit form. 
the deposit form consisting of those three different items that came out of undeposited funds. Closing this back out then, and scrolling back up the other side then going out of undeposited funds, if we go back to the prior report, then we scroll down and see undeposited funds. Now it's nice here that the undeposited funds is still there even though it's zero, because that shows it's had activity in it. And that's kind of the default these days on, on QuickBooks Online. Notice if you were to say non-zero items here, then it might not be there. So just, just note it's nice to have that there. And if it's not there, oftentimes if you go to the trial balance, uh, it, it'll, it'll be there as well. So because it has the same kind of function of the non-zero function. So in any case, it's nice that it's there even though it's zero because that allows us to do the quick zoom. So I can zoom into that. And then say, all right, we had these deposits. I want to check out what's going on in here with regards to the deposits. And we had these three deposits going down. And notice again, we could check them all off. It didn't put them in there one lump sum because now we could tie out the increase and the decrease, the increase and the decrease, the increase and the decrease, and then the increase and then the decrease. Like, and then it'll tie out. So then if I go into any one of them, however, we'll see the deposit. And the deposit, which includes those three components to it, the total deposit being that 13192 that we can then find on the bank statement or in our uh, banking books. It's going to go back out, scroll back up to the forms. Any effect on the profit and loss? None, right? Because we did that back in the past. We did that back when we entered the invoice. The income statement was affected or the create sales receipt. Then we receive the payment on the invoice. Then we put it in the deposit. When we get to this point, all we're doing is taking it out of one uh, cash account, undeposited funds, putting it in the other, the checking account.